Hello all. Uh, this is a video on the short story, A Good Man is Hard to Find by Flannery O'Connor. This video is intended to help you in both your reading of this short story and the discussion post that is associated with this short story. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit about the author first. Flannery O'Connor was born on March 25th in 1925 in Savannah, Georgia, and she was the only child of Edward O'Connor, a real estate agent, and Regina Klein. O'Connor described herself as, quote, a pigeon-toed child with a receding chin and a you leave me alone or I'll bite you complex. When O'Connor was six, however, she experienced her first brush with celebrity status. The Pathé News uh, people filmed little Mary O'Connor with her trained chicken and showed the film around the country. O'Connor attended the Peabody Laboratory School, from which she graduated in 1942. She entered Georgia State College for Women, now Georgia College and University in an accelerated three-year program, and she graduated in June of 1945 with Associate Sciences degree. In 1946, she was accepted into the prestigious Iowa Writers Workshop at the University of Iowa, where she first um, went to study journalism. She would later die on August 3rd, 1964, at only the age of 39 from lupus. O'Connor was an important voice in American literature. Uh, she wrote two novels and 32 short stories, as well as a number of reviews and commentaries. She was a Southern writer who often wrote in the Southern Gothic style, which she more or less popularized. And she relied heavily on regional settings and grotesque characters. O'Connor's writing also referred uh, her own Roman Catholic faith and frequently examined questions of morality and ethics. A good man is hard to find is no different. Her complete stories won the 1972 U.S. National Book Award for Fiction, and she was later named in 2009 as the best of the National Book Awards. The first piece I want to cover are a number of motifs you will come across in A Good Man is Hard to Find. Now, recall that a motif is an intersection of literal and figurative language that reoccurs in literature. This is not limited to O'Connor's works, but literature on the whole. The first of these motifs is that classic good versus evil dichotomy. In A Good Man is Hard to Find, it's a confrontation between a grandmother with a rather superficial sense of goodness and a criminal who embodies real evil. The grandmother seems to treat goodness mostly as a function of being decent, having good manners, and coming from a family of the right people. What a contrast when the grandmother encounters the misfit, who seems straightforwardly evil, with little to no sense of guilt and a genuine desire to be cruel or destructive uh, for, for their own sake, more or less. Understanding the motivations of the misfit and what goodness is, by contrast, is one of the central puzzle pieces of this story. The second motif deals with society and class. The grandmother in Good Man is Hard to Find gives great importance to being a lady, and her ideas about what that means reflect on old-fashioned, somewhat upper-crest southern mindset. She uses the n-word and longs for the good old days when kids were polite, people were trustworthy, and there were plenty of plantations to visit. All this leads her to associate being good with coming from a respectable family and behaving like a member of her social class. Those who don't are outsiders. Her sensibilities are in for quite a shock when she meets the misfit. The third motif in this story is the use of manipulation between characters. Flannery O'Connor understood her story as a tale of good, evil, and divine grace. Other critics, however, have seen it in it something more cynical. 
Many see it as a story of, self, of a selfish woman who uses manipulation to get what she wants, but is ultimately unable to save herself by her own actions. There are several moments in the story when the grandmother manipulates others, including her family members and even the criminal. An interesting question is whether she would ever stop being manipulative, and if so, when? The final motif I want to mention is that of religion. The central confrontation between the grandmother and the misfit revolves around the figure of Jesus. The grandmother brings up praying to Jesus in the hope that she can induce or even manipulate the misfit to spare her life by appealing to his religious sense. It turns out, however, that the misfit has probably thought about Jesus more seriously than even the grandmother. The misfit's doubt in Jesus leads him to think that there is no real right or wrong and no ultimate point of life. It brings up the question that drives this motif. Without religion, is there an objective sense of right and wrong? At the story's climax, the grandmother appears to receive a moment of divine grace, an insight into a subtle truth, which might transform her in the misfit. How you interpret the ending of this story is the major hurdle to overcome. Moving on to my second point on theme in this story, uh, O'Connor uses literary devices of irony and foreshadowing to build a theme in her short story, A Good Man is Hard to Find. Now, let us discuss irony first in A Good Man is Hard to Find. Irony, again, is the contradiction between what is and what should be. The grandmother says that she wouldn't take her child into the direction of a criminal like the misfit who's a loose in it. She couldn't answer to her conscience if that were the case. But ironically, this is exactly what she does when she tempts the family into visiting an old house along the way of their vacation trip. A second point of irony comes in the end. Quote, but nobody's killed, end quote, said June Starr after the car accident on the dirt road. This is ironic because of the end of the story. Small spoiler here, uh, there is a murder in this story. A third point of irony runs along the same lines as the second, quote, Bailey and the children's mother and the baby sat in front and they left Atlanta at 845 with the mileage on the car at 55,890. The grandmother wrote this down because she thought it would be interesting to say how many miles they had been when they got back, end quote. These sentences are ironic because of the ending. Now a little bit on foreshadowing, and this is a narrative device in which suggestions or warnings about events to come are dropped or planted. O'Connor uses a number of these in A Good Man is Hard to Find. Keep an eye out for these devices. Here are some moments to keep in mind. First, the use of the misfit in the beginning of the story. Second, the conversation with June Starr. Third, the grandmother dressed in her Sunday best. And fourth, the description of the misfit's car. And I challenge you, what other use of foreshadowing do you see in this story? One last point I would like to make is a practice in historical theory. Now, your discussion is going to ask you to use a literary theory in your post. So let's look at uh, the time period of O'Connor set in, a, in this story and why that setting and time frame is important to historical theory. The era of the story is never explicitly defined, and that's important to note. But given the cars and the mention of Gone with the Wind, which was published as a book in 1936 and released as a movie in 1939, we can guess it's well, the 1940s or later. Since there's no mention of a war going on, then the grandmother says that, quote, the way Europe acted, you would think we were made of money, end quote. It's almost certainly after the war, meaning late 1940s or early 50s. That would be right about when O'Connor wrote this story in 1953, anyway. So we can see that O'Connor is writing the story within the context of her own time. How fascinating that her themes and motifs are still utilized in literature, film, and other forms of entertainment today.
Thank you very much for your time and good luck with your post.